industries are crucial for our economic growth. But these industries are also a major cause of industrial pollution. So, can we ignore the pollution and degradation caused by these industries? Such activities have huge negative consequences. Industrial pollution can be categorized into air pollution, water pollution, thermal pollution, noise pollution and radioactive contamination. Industries produce toxic gases that cause air pollution. Gases like sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide are some of the main pollutants. Air particulate matter and dust particles are also hazardous to humans. Chemical and paper factories, brick kilns, refineries and smelting plants are the major contributors of air pollution. Violation of pollution norms by these industries worsens the situations in many parts of India. Air pollution is not only hazardous to human health, it has an adverse impact on animals, plants, buildings and the atmosphere as a whole. Sometimes mishandling of industrial chemicals can cause leaks and affect the general population. The Bhopal gas tragedy is one such example. Let's move on to the topic of water pollution. Many industries are responsible for the contamination of water. Many industries discharge organic and inorganic industrial wastes and effluents without treatment directly into water bodies. Industries processing paper, pulp, chemical, textile and dyeing, petroleum refineries, tanneries and electroplating industries let out untreated pollutants into the water bodies. These pollutants include dyes, detergents, acids, salts and heavy metals like lead and mercury, pesticides, fertilizers, synthetic chemicals with carbon, plastics and rubber and much more. Solid waste like fly ash, phosphogypsum and iron and steel slags are also among major water pollutants. Thermal pollution is another major concern. Many industries also release hot water from factories and thermal power plants directly into the rivers and ponds. As a result, the natural temperature of the water bodies increases, which is referred to as thermal pollution. Thermal pollution threatens aquatic lives. Noise pollution deserves attention from the public and the government. Construction activities in residential areas might be the most familiar source of noise pollution. Factory equipment, generators and electric drills are also major contributors to this menace. Noise can cause stress, irritation and anger. More serious cases of noise pollution can lead to hearing impairment, increased heart rate, blood pressure and other physiological effects. Apart from all these, nuclear waste is also becoming an alarming problem. Radioactive waste from nuclear power plants and nuclear weapon production facilities cause cancers, birth defects and miscarriages. Another issue is the environmental damage caused by industries in the form of soil pollution. Dumping of waste, especially glass, harmful chemicals, industrial effluents, salts, packaging materials and garbage renders the soil useless. But the problem doesn't end here. When it rains, water percolates into the soil. This may carry the pollutants deeper into the ground and the groundwater can also get contaminated. Pollution of all types needs to be curbed to safeguard humans as well as all other kinds of life on earth. In the long run, the combined effect of different kinds
kinds of pollution and degradation can be disastrous. Think about it. I mean, what's the point of all the different industries and their products if we push the environment and the lives of all living beings to the point of no return? Water is the most important natural resource for human beings. It is equally important for operating many industries. But polluted water released into the fresh water bodies has dangerous consequences. Can you guess the amount of fresh water polluted by 1 litre of waste water discharged by industries? Well, it pollutes approximately 8 litres of fresh water. That's 8 times. However, there are a few steps we can take to reduce the effects of water pollution. Treating polluted water containing effluents before releasing them into rivers and ponds is the most necessary step to be taken. So, how does this water treatment work? Well, this treatment is done in three stages. Primary, secondary and tertiary. Now, in primary treatment, the solid waste which is not soluble in water is separated out. This can be done through various mechanical means like screening which filters out the waste that are slightly larger in size. Sedimentation in which gravity is used to remove solids that settle at the bottom of the tank at the treatment plant. And flocculation in which fine particulates are clumped together so that it can later be easily removed. Once the water is free of these wastes, we move on to the next step. Secondary treatment uses biological processes to treat the water. One of these processes includes bioremediation, in which living organisms are added to the waste to degrade organically or transform contaminants or to reduce them to environmentally safe levels. After this, we move on to tertiary treatment. Now, this can include biological, chemical and physical processes as well as recycling of wastewater. Now, apart from remedying the issues with respect to the quality of water, challenges like overexploitation also affect the quantity of water that is available to us. So, what can we do to tackle this problem? Well, we can minimize the use of water by reusing and recycling the used water. To meet the water needs, Rainwater harvesting facilities can also be installed in industries and households. This can help recharge the groundwater and reduce the rate of its extraction. Besides, regulation of overexploitation of groundwater through legal means can also be an effective step. Apart from the issues related to water, Air quality is also a serious problem posed to us. So, how do we fight this menace? Well, to control the particulate matter in air, we need to deploy smoke stacks with electrostatic precipitators. Moreover, fabric filters, scrubbers, and inertial separators should be fitted to factories. Oil and gas can be used as alternatives to coal to reduce smoke in some of the industries. The dangerous consequences of deafening noises also needs to be addressed. Noise pollution can be curbed by fitting silencers to generators. Moreover, machinery can be redesigned to reduce noise and increase efficiency. Earphones 
earplugs and noise absorbing material can also be deployed to reduce the impact of noise pollution on workers and people. We realize the importance of industries in every step of our daily life. But we also need to address the issues of pollution and environmental degradation for a sustainable future. Without a parallel focus, we can't expect for peaceful economic growth and development.